Ooh. Before we get into this episode of Tea Time with Mary, I just want to say I am not a medical professional. I am not a doctor. I have just gathered some research on the internet about this very new bit of information, and I thought it was best to make a video about it. This is not for fear-mongering or anything, just so we, as consumers, can mayhaps make more informed decisions. And now, it's tea time. It's tea time with Mary. Hello, good morning. Welcome back to Tea Parties on the Internet. I am your host, Miss Mary Lou, and today's episode is gonna be a little bit different. There has been some things in the news about tea, and I thought that we should talk about it on, you know, the tea parties, all of my tea-loving tea time fam. I thought this would be a great place to bring it to your attention, especially because it's gotten some news coverage in, say, Canada, but I haven't seen too, too much popping up in other areas and I just I think it's a good thing for us to discuss and for you to know about the possibility of microplastics being ingested through your tea. We're gonna super get into it more but first if you are not subscribed to the Miss Mary Lou channel already you are seriously missing out! Please hit the red subscribe button below and the little notification bell so you know when I upload. All right, let's talk about some important stuff, friends. Okay, okay, okay. So before we get talking too much, what are microplastics? Microplastics are defined as a particle of plastic less than five millimeters in length. So it, it, that might actually seem kind of big, for a microplastic, but that's the definition we're going with here today. So microplastics are all in our environment, in our ocean, even coming off of the plastic on our clothes. Some recent research out of Australia suggests that human beings consume about 39,000 to 52,000 microplastic particles per year just from seafood, salt, sugar, alcohol, and water consumption alone. Now, of course, these are very conservative figures. A lot of the microplastic research is very, very new, and that's important to keep in mind throughout all of this video. Just based on those specific things we consume alone, not including everything else, it's estimated that we roughly consume hundreds of thousands of microplastic particles per year. Now this, this seems like a lot. That seems like a lot of plastic in our bodies that scientists don't really know exactly what it does yet. So how does this, one may ask, relate to tea? Recently in Canada, a university out of Quebec called McGill had some things published that were very surprising to everybody. The study focused on silken type tea bags. These are the ones usually seen on like higher end teas in like little pyramid shapes that kind of have like a white sort of look to them, but you can still see the tea through it. Usually things like larger leaves, etc, etc, are found in these kinds of tea bags. I'm sure you've seen them. I've had them, seen them, etc. So out of McGill, there was a study published measuring the amount of microplastics that appear in brewing a cup of tea with one of these silken tea bags. The researchers themselves only thought that there would be a few, and they were extremely surprised when they discovered that billions of microplastics from these silken tea bags are released into every cup. So we think back on some of the Australia information I talked about, right, where they thought maybe-ish they're inferring that humans consume a couple hundred thousand microplastic particles a year. So in a single cup of tea, there can be billions of microplastic particles in every single cup. 
And this is because unlike something like a water bottle, which these sorts of tea bags have some things in common with, some things for instance, such as polyethylene and terephthalate, which are also found in water bottles. But the difference is, is you're not putting a water bottle into boiling water. And that's where a huge, huge difference comes in. I'm not saying this to scare you. I'm simply saying this to inform you. Again, the research in how microplastics affect human health are still very, very young, very, very new. The early signs of some studies that are coming out uh, do not look positive. For instance, we know that BPA is bad for your health. It can mess with your endocrine system. It can be a prohibitor, etc., etc. So there is maybe some cause for concern, I will say. Am I telling you to throw out all of your silken, beautiful tea bags? No, I'm not telling you to throw them away, but I am encouraging you to cut them open and brew them loose so that at least that way you're not submerging the plastic bag into boiling water. The research also suggests moving back towards paper tea bags would be a really good idea because again, you don't have boiling plastic in your cup. And the researchers did recommend stop using silken tea bags outright, especially until more research can be done that really say how these can affect our bodies. And this isn't even to mention nanoplastic research, which are plastic particles that are between one and 100 micrometers in length. These plastics are even smaller and have the potential to actually go into the bloodstream and possibly human cells. So that research is also happening right now. Again, it's very new and you can't make a direct causation sort of thing from nanoplastics or microplastics that we're ingesting. But again, a word of caution. If you're worried about brewing loose leaf tea, I have a whole video for you about it. I, I love drinking loose leaf tea. I usually buy it loose. And again, if you have to cut open your tea bags to brew what's inside of them loose, please do. I highly, highly encourage you to. And I will say I have to side with the researchers, with the science on this one. I will be avoiding the silken tea bags at all cost, at least brewing them whole in my hot water. Again, the scientists that were spearheading this research were extremely alarmed. My hope is that people will talk about this topic more, especially when it comes to tea brands moving away from using silken tea bags and back towards paper or simply selling it loose. Again, like I said in the beginning, I am certainly not a doctor, a medical professional, a scientist. I am just an avid tea lover who is concerned about the tea drinkers of the world. So friends, have any of you heard about this story? I am going to link the uh, news clip that links to the actual study itself in the comments below. Let me know what your thoughts are. What do you think are maybe some of the best ways to sort of deal with this issue moving forward? Again, my objective is not to send you into any sort of panic, but just to simply inform you that there's some new research out there that I think for a tea community is, uh, is pretty important to know. My loves, my tea time fam, I hope that you found this video helpful and last and most important of all, I hope you have a wonderful day and I will see you next tea party. It's tea time with Mary. Come on, everybody, sing along, you know the words. Thanks for watching Tea Time with Mary. I hope to see you real soon. If you want to, like, subscribe, and comment. Uh -uh, I think that that would be cool. Check out my Facebook.com slash Tea Time with Mary for all the content that's new. Or my Instagram. Damn.
Twitch and Twitter. I'm at Miss Mary Lou. So thanks again for joining us. And thanks for being a friend. We'll see you next tea party. The fun never ends on tea time with Mary. That's me. <laughs> I was really nervous about doing this episode, friends, but I think it's important, you know?